Hello and welcome to the video. This is a quick overview if you're brand new to the OpenTX powered radios from people like FreeSky, Jumper, TBS and others. Now if you have come from another kind of radio like Futaba or Spectrum, these radios can appear incredibly complicated and for some pilots OpenTX is just a little bit too much. And this video is to hopefully explain a little bit about some of the vagaries. Now, if you're new to OpenTX, and this is all something that you don't understand, go and check out my OpenTX Mix School, which is on the channel, as it does start from very basic principles and kind of covers this stuff, but I thought it was worthwhile doing an updated video to help those of you that haven't spotted those videos already on the channel find the content. Now, this is particularly for a Patreon of mine, a gentleman called Scott, and Scott's been working his way through a Jumper T16 radio, and it's been confusing him a little bit. And that's not surprising, because the way OpenTX works is actually really, really powerful, but only when you kind of understand how all the different pieces of the jigsaw puzzle fit together and how you use them. So, as with any radio, we have lots of physical controls on the radio itself, and then via some black magic they appear out of the receiver and the pins on the receiver connect to things like speed controllers servos and other things inside the model itself now the way it works is not as simple as some of those other expensive radios that we've mentioned so normally you would have a very simple connection between things like the throttle aileron elevator rudder this is a mode 2 radio and those outputs so you'd expect that all you need to do is tell the receiver or the outputs on the uh, radio that's going to talk to the receiver which of the controls you want to talk to but that's not how it actually works in OpenTX. How it actually works is a little bit different. There's a couple of intermediate stages. Now, this appears initially overly complicated, and I do understand that. When I first got into OpenTX, I came from Spectrum. I was looking at this and thinking, okay, why do we need an inputs page? But as you get into more and more sophisticated models and setup, you realize that the input page is actually really, really handy. Now, the inputs page is where you define each of the individual controls and you connect those to physical things on the radio. So it could be switches, it could be gimbals, sliders, rotary controls. Uh, it could even be the trims by the side of the individual controls yourself. Any control on the radio can be remapped. By default, they're used in a very traditional way, but via the inputs page, you can change pretty much anything. The other important thing to know is if you're going to be flying a fixed wing, then things like the trim tabs actually affect the control that you set up via the input pages. So normally when you set up a brand new model, it's going to populate this for you with the four basic controls, throttle, aileron, elevator and rudder. But in here you can add additional controls for flaps, gear, all that kind of good stuff. Now, the last step on the radio is to go into the mixer page. Now, the mixer page is where you then order those inputs into the order that you want. And it's also a chance to change specific things that are happening. So say, for example, you wanted to change dual rates, then you could actually change things like the travel. You can change the offset loads of different things inside the mixer page. And you could have it so that you had different flight modes. So maybe the elevator uh, was in one position for launch and then you flicked a switch on the radio and then it moved to another elevator mix which didn't have it. And in the mixer page you can also directly connect things like the switches to individual output channels. So for example in a quadcopter you have the first four typically as things like your flight controls, throttle, aileron, elevator, rudder. Then you're going to have things like your mode switch and arming switch and you can just add them in via the mixer if you don't want to do anything particularly clever because you're going to set all that up in something like Betaflight or iNav. But the way it works is that the channels on the mixer page are faithfully represented on the receiver. So channel one, if it's throttle, is going to be output one on the receiver. So that's where you're going to plug your speed controller. Channel two will be aileron, so that's where you're going to plug your ailerons, etc., etc. And if you are going to use the S bus out or an S bus receiver, then the channel order is also going to reflect the output in the mixer page. So in mine, it's going to be throttle, aileron, elevator, rudder, and whatever else I've got set. Now, by default, 
the radio will do most of the setup for this so you don't have to worry too much about it it just does all the connections it's only when you're starting to get into some more advanced setup stuff that this slightly weird apparently overly complicated way of connecting a control on the radio to an output on the receiver comes into its own and starts to allow you to do some pretty amazing stuff but the big thing that was confusing Scott is that he needed a particular order out of his receiver for the model that he's working on. I think it's a helicopter with a stabilizer in it and the, and the, the stabilizer needs a very specific set of inputs in a particular order. Now, if your radio in the mixer page is giving you a different order, then because the order in the mixer page is faithfully reproduced on the receiver, then by moving things around on the mixer page, you can change the channel order on the receiver. Now, interestingly, for those of you that want to know, the channel order, the default channel order that's used whenever you create a new model, is actually set inside the radio itself. It's something that's hidden away in the menus and if you find yourself doing this all the time then you can set it in that menu part for the order that you prefer the default order and it will then use that from there on but let me just show you how easy it is to move this throttle aileron elevator rudder setup that i have on the radio into something else so let's imagine in this particular instance that we need an order of AETR, which is another very common order. Now at the moment, I think everything's in the wrong place. So what I can do is I know aileron needs to be channel one, so I can highlight that, press enter to bring up the sub menu, and select move, and then I can move it around so it's part of channel one. Now we can see here that channel one has both aileron and throttle on it, but let's not worry about that. We'll fix that in a minute. Let's move elevator, press and hold the enter key, select move and move that into channel two. And then let's select that throttle, which is in the wrong place. Press and hold enter, select move again, and then just roll that down into channel three, press enter. And now we have A, E, T and R. And it also means if you're going to connect up something to the S output on a receiver like this, or one of the little diddy teeny weeny receivers that we have for things like quadcopters, then again the channel order on the S output is going to be aileron, elevator, throttle and rudder. And you just move them around to be in the right order that you need. So hopefully that helps those of you who were a little bit confused about this. It is a bit more complicated than it needs to be. And in the early days, it's just a bit overwhelming. But trust me, once you start getting into more complicated mixing stuff, this is part of the power of the OpenTX system. Thank you for watching my video and watching right to the very end. If you want to find out what I'm currently working on, you can follow me on social media by searching for Painless360 in the usual places. If you'd like to become part of the inner circle, then you can become a Patreon. Details are in the description and you get lots of additional benefits. Check out the playlist section on the channel too. I organize all of my videos into playlists and it's called something like Introduction to or for Beginners. All of the content is aimed so that you can start at the very beginning and it teaches you that subject, starting with simple principles and moving up to teach you everything you need to know.